obey my commands. Good luck, touch those guys, and let's come out and go to work. Is it too early, Jim and Emmanuel, to demand a rematch? <laughs> <laughs> of a fight which could have taken place in 1999. In other words, you're anticipating <laughs> a great fight tonight. I'm anticipating a battle, yes. The roar is one of expectation and fulfillment. A crowd which knows that this has been a fight waiting for years in the making. Two technical boxers of great skill with warrior hearts who can be expected in this opening round to try to figure out what the other man wants to do. Both fighters working early with their left hands, looking and yeah. jabbing. Fireworks are going right away, and both guys are punching not only fast, but they're powerful shots, very well placed. Nothing is sloppy, and it's going to be like this throughout the entire fight. Herrera throwing his left hook right under Marquez's heart. Marquez working upstairs using slightly greater height. Both guys are good counter punches, on, in addition to being good all the way around fighters. Both counter punch very well. Both can lead or counter. Yes. Both can box or punch. Hard right hand by Marquez. Herrera says, I'll throw a hard right hand, too. I don't think I've seen a fighter since Sugar Ray Leonard who responds to a punch as quickly as Herrera does. And a lot of time, Larry, Herrera looks like he's getting hit. When he doesn't, he has a great way of rolling and taking effective punches away. And that's why he's been through a lot of those fights without getting hit clean when people think he's getting hit. And he doesn't take all of the punishment that people think he's taking. Right now, Herrera's left jab is beating Marquez to the punch. There's a heart-stopping intensity in this confrontation. So much on the line, you can feel it in the minds of both fighters. And you wonder if Marquez won't be a tiny bit too anxious against the big fight mentality of Herrera, who's been here so many times before. Good one-two inside by Herrera. Marquez countered with a quick left hook. This time, Marquez leads with the left hook. This fight is going to be very, very right special. Hand upstairs by Barrera. Both guys are punching extremely hard and extremely sharp and accurate. I mean, no one can make any mistake at all. One mistake in this fight could turn it and be over it in one second. Well, not terribly surprisingly, round one feels like Barrera Morales four. It's very similar to what we saw in those three fights. I think a, well, a little bit more accurate punching power, I think, from Marquez and even uh, at the time Morales. And Eric was able yeah, to show. Yeah. This stuff, this is world-class stuff, this first round. Right there, you saw Barrera look like he got hit with a solid right, but he rolled his head and took most of the power out of it. And landed a telling left yeah. hand to the body. Both fighters got in some shots. We're in, we're in. Very well. You're doing real good, no problem. All right, close your eyes now. All right, don't, don't, don't go into him. Relax. But you got to work more that left. Work that left. Come in with that left. You got to counter punch him upstairs. When he throws you, counter punch. Right here, you see Marquez laying a sweeping right hand on Barrera right there. And Barrera got hit with the punch. And if he keeps getting hit with those type punches, it can have a big effect. But he rolled half of that steam off of it still. But it's good right hand. Combi box numbers in round one. Barrera 18 out of 47. Marquez 20 out of 62. Barrera at a slightly higher percentage. Marquez throwing just a little bit more. Barrera landed 13 power shots. Marquez landed 14 power shots. In other words, little or nothing to choose between the two fighters. 
To the degree that anyone was the aggressor, Marquez seemed to want to get off his shots a little bit more, but Barrera was choosing, picking his spots, and landing just as hard. And there you saw that Barrera ability to slip the punch by rolling his chin away from the impact. Barrera stepping inside of Marquez right and banging away to the body with a left hook. Barrera looks very sharp and very fast. Much even faster than I even expected. Barrera trained for 10 weeks at altitude in Big Bear, California. He compared this training camp to his training camps for Prince Nassim Hamed and for the third Eric Morales fight, which he said were the other two hardest training camps of his career. And he's working very good with a counter left hook whenever Marquez comes in. Sometimes he throws the left hook to the body because Marquez has a tendency to bend over to his right when he comes in. And Barrera's trying to take advantage of by shooting left uppercuts and left counter hooks. In this round, Barrera has begun to force Marquez to miss just a little bit more than in round one. Stepping inside of Marquez's shots, countering to the body. I think that uh, Barrera has adjusted what he wanted to do by being the aggressor because he found... Big left hook by Barrera upstairs. Sees the opportunity and goes at him again. He found, Jim, that he can out... He's outboxing Marquez. He's beating him to the punch, which, which may be a surprise to both of them right now. There's a left hook to the body. Get him back with Marquez the left counters top. with two left hooks of his own. But you're right, Larry. It is Barrera who's beating his man to the punch more frequently than the opposite. Stop! Barrera fires a straight right hand. Not a punch he'll use all that often. Good left hook to the body inside by Barrera while Marquez tries to work upstairs, and Mark Antonio ducks the big stuff. Barrera sticking the jab and still beating Juan Manuel to the punch here in round number two. I have the feeling, Emmanuel, that Barrera is the more relaxed fighter. More relaxed, and I'm, I'm just amazed by the hand speed that he has. I don't think I've ever saw him faster with his hand speed than he is now. Barrera making Marquez reach and then stepping Look inside and tattooing him with hard shots. That was a perfect right hand chop over the top. Marquez missing and missing again. Barrera had a very good round, too. It looks sensational in the round to me. Good. You see that one, two, three? That's it. Well done. Well done. Well done. But don't bring your guard down. Your hands up. Your hands up. Uh, show her resistance also. Good. Upper and hook on the left, on the right. Barrera's left hooks has given a lot of problems to Marquez. And he's mixing up the left hooks. He's on body punches and punches to the head, all with the left hook. Through all of his career, he's had one of the better left hooks in the business. Particularly the body, but in recent years, more frequently and increasingly to the head. Power shots in round two. Barrera 14 out of 30. Marquez 11 out of 38. Barrera also winning the jabbing contest. 8 out of 27 to 3 out of 24. Barrera. These rounds are going to be close. Barrera's doing everything. He's using upper body movement, a little half a step back, in and out to keep him off balance. Actually mixing up jabs with his attack. And then counter punch is very effective also. Once again, he made Marquez overreach, stepped inside, and landed a body shot. Now Marquez lands a big left hook. Barrera lands a right hand in return. Marco beginning to pick off punches with his gloves now. Seeing it coming just a little bit. Upstairs by Marquez. Right to the body, left hook upstairs. There's one thing about these Wells trained fighters. They all use a finish up with right hands, followed up with left hooks. Whether it's a hook to the body or a hook on the chin. The entire fight has been in the center of the ring. There's been nothing even remotely close to a clinch. This is what we're going to see all night long. 
Technical skill at its highest level. shot missed big with the left hook no where sticks the jab again sticks the jab again sticks the jab again Herrera brilliant at finding that middle beat in your pattern to hit you with his jab just when you don't think it's coming it comes out like a telescope he's made the transition from being a, a baby-faced assassin to a grizzled sharpshooter he's mixing up his everything right now boxing good and the fight with Marquez, who I think may be still for 126 pounds the best in the world, it, 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 you can't make any mistakes. And both guys are doing a variety of things. And I think as the fight goes on, it's going to be much more intense. Like this. Yeah. And you can't beat the shepherd. Just not just doing punches, but power, accurate, pinpoint punches. Herrera's got a strange jab. It looks a little awkward the way he does it. But it, but it, it catches you because it's an off-beat type jab. Absolutely. He finds that yeah. middle beat in yeah. your rhythm. Yeah. There were brilliant moments in that round for both fighters. Where's the ice? You're doing good. Juan, don't bring your head up. Because you can move your head off to the side and make a miss. Good job. Feel it with your self-confidence. You're doing real good. You're doing it. Right here, you see one of the characteristics that has made Barrera such a great fighter. Anytime he gets hit with anything, he always comes back with punches. I'm looking at the three judges at ringside. Doug Tucker, Patricia Jarman, Paul Smith. What a tough job, job tonight. This is going to be a test of every judge's security. Did I pick the right man? That <laughs> round was close. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I got to tell you, I think the guy's just in control of this fight. He's landed a cleaner, harder shots when he has to. He's at the top of his game. He seems to be... The utmost of confidence coming forward. He's the aggressor. Marquez, on the other hand, always a slow starter. I re you know, he started to turn it on in the third round, made it close. I guess he's going to turn it on around four, five, and six, because that's how Juan Manuel, Juan Manuel fights. Three to nothing, Barrera. It would be fascinating to know if any of the official scores were secure enough to score the first three rounds all for the same man. It's not easy when rounds are this close. It's so one thing that Marquez does not want the runner to get going for this is jab, because once the runner gets his jab to go on, he sets up a lot of different combinations off of that. And he can mess up your rhythm, because once again, he has an off-rhythm jab. He throws yeah, it at the yeah. moment when you're not expecting it. Exactly. A lot of guys when they jab and take a big step and you can time and feel the jab coming. He doesn't do that. He just pushes it out from when he looks like he's in a position where he can't jab, he'll jab. And if you throw it right hand over, he turns his head enough to make it where you can't even count all this jab. And he has a brilliant ability to catch you at the moment when you want to come forward with his jab. So he's shown all of that in the first three rounds. And Marquez shows the intensity of someone who wants to stay on the attack and keep the pressure up. Body shot by Marquez. He may try to do more of that as time goes on. Barrera is the one with the body punching stock in past fights. Yeah. But Marquez seems like he's trying to get in position to land a good right hand. And as he gets closer to Barrera, he might catch Barrera with that right hand because Barrera won't have enough room to roll it off if the fight goes on. Uppercut by Barrera. This is a tactical round four. Barrera seems to have confidence at this point that he can win the boxing match and is confident enough to fight in a tactical fashion. Some thought that he might go to war more so 
because Marquez is such a skilled boxer. That was a potential low blow call against Marquez. And Barrera oh. steps forward with a perfect one, too. Well, he's steps getting his away jab. from the pawing right. He's getting his jab rhythm to go in now. Once he gets set to go in, it's all over with. Marquez is still punching very short, active power punches. And in particular, I'm watching his right hand. Even though he hasn't been that effective, I'm just seeing it look like that's the shot that he was, he's really gambling on a lot. But in terms of solid connects, Marco Antonio Barrera is being the boss once again in round four. And the crowd rises to appreciate the intensity of this war. How are you feeling? Feeling well? Bring your left or your right up a little bit. The hook and the upper, you haven't thrown the upper. Okay. Good? Okay. All right, jab, 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 and when you have him, set him up. Hook, hook to the body. Okay. Right here, you see Marquez landing, which I think is the punch that he's gambling on to win this fight for the most. It's that right hand, and I, it seemed like he's trying to get himself in position to land that punch more than any other punch tonight. Through round four, average jabs per round. Herrera landing nine of 28. It feels like more. Marquez five out of 25. Harold Letterman gives a round to Marquez for the first time in the fight. And as we mentioned, the official scores tonight, Paul Smith, Doug Tucker, and Patricia Jarman with a difficult job on their hands. I remember many times watching rounds in Barrera's fights with Morales and wondering how could you choose between these two men? Yeah. They score and score and score. You know, Barrera has that ability because he, he you know, he every time he gets hit with a punch, he retaliates right away. So it's hard for a judge to keep up with the score. Exactly right, uh, Emmanuel. That he doesn't give the opponent or the judges a chance to think that things are not going, that things are going against him. But Marquez is fighting an extremely determined fight. I see a man, I'm looking at his face. He is determined to fight the fight of his life also tonight. And, it, and I think going down a stretch, when neither guy feels that they're comfortable ahead on the scorecards, you're going to see everything go to another level. Marquez has landed one sharp right hand in this round. There's a solid left hook upstairs for Marquez. Barrera a little bit less active now. That jab not coming out as frequently as it did in no. rounds three and four. I wonder if Barrera is thinking Marquez really doesn't like to be coming forward this way. I'm making him uncomfortable because he really hasn't attacked him very often. See, or is it simply that Barrera has fallen increasingly into this pattern later in his career? This uh, is the way he fought Juarez in the last fight. This is a tit-for-tat fight. Big uppercut for Marquez. You heard Nacho Beristain yeah. asking him to throw the uppercut. And he hadn't done so before. And Barrera came right back with a combination. Even though he didn't land, but he fired right back. Left hook for Barrera. Marquez flailing and reaching to try to land something in return for that. They both have the same instinct for trying to hit back. Crowd oohed and out on the left hook, but Marquez found mostly air. Herrera beginning to stick the jab again. Good left hook inside by Barrera. Good counter left hook. Marquez missing with a long right hand. Barrera sticks the jab, yep. sticks the jab, yeah. sticks the jab, moves in a radial circle. Marquez with a big left hook. Barrera fired back and missed. Solid shots in that round for Juan Manuel Marquez. Come on, you're working with your guard down. You're working with your guard down. Bring it up. Come on, stand up straight. Come on, work it. 
Throw more punches. Throw more punches. Use the combinations, get the combinations, move, get the combinations and pressure him. Our shots in round five, according to CompuBox, Barrera seven out of 20, Marquez 17 out of 36. So a big edge in power connects in the fifth round for Juan Manuel Marquez. Fight seems to be tightening up on the scorecards, or at least on the card of Harold Letterman. We saw a sign that said cut caused by punch. I'm looking for the cut. It may be a small nick outside the left eye of Juan Manuel Marquez. Left hook for Marquez. Bangs Barrera back against the ropes. It's one of the first times all night that a fighter has had his back against the ropes. I see Barrera in his body language now is looking to attack. Barrera holding his hands a little higher, coming forward more than before. And he holds his hands higher, often he jabs more. And he sticks the jab twice there as Marquez misses over the top. Mar Marquez is shooting everything with power. Where Barrera mixes up here, so he'll relax, box a little bit, then he'll tighten up. Everything Marquez does has got knockout written on it. Barrera steps through the clinch and tries for a big uppercut, then dodges a left hand from Marquez. Barrera going to the body. Marquez going to the body. Left hook upstairs landed for Marquez. Barrera trying to counter with a left hook right away. Solid right hand for Barrera as Marquez leaned in on a left. Another big right hand for Barrera. Hot shotting Marquez and trying to find that spot around the eye where already a small cut has been called. Marquez leaning in to throw the left hook to the body. Barrera sticks the jab to push him back. Hard right hand lead by Juan Manuel Marquez. Now Barrera comes back and fires to the body and upstairs with a right hand. Round here, seeming to understand that he allowed Marquez to be the aggressor in the last round. Now Nady warns Barrera about using his head. I don't see where no one is doing anything. It's just a good fight at this stage, but you know, that's that's the referee's call. But it's what's interesting though, right now, Barrera's trying to throw right hand leads. They trade combinations in the center of the ring, and both men land. A fight breaks out in the middle of the boxing match. And the crowd goes nuts. Come on, when you go in, you hug him when you're on the inside. You got the Vaseline mixed. How is it, Nacho? March 26, it's a replay of Costas Now. If you missed it, the show's entirely devoted to college athletics. Check out the profile of Duke basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski. Also that night, it's the premiere of the HBO sports documentary, The UCLA Dynasty. A look at the dominant college basketball team of all time, the UCLA Bruins from 1964 through 1975, 10 championships in 12 years. Come on, more punches. Where are you? More punches, harder punches. Let him see it. Let him see it that you are the man, that you're Rain. Come on, you're letting him lead. He's going to come to you now. First weekend of the Final Four in Las Vegas, 
Casinos and sports books jammed with betters, many of them pouring into this arena to take a break from the basketball and catch a great boxing match between Marco Antonio Barrera and Juan Manuel Marquez. Power numbers in the sixth round. Barrera, 13 out of 32, a higher percentage rate. Marquez, 14 out of 42, throwing more. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? Look at you, 58, 56, four rounds to two, Marco Antonio Barrera. You know, Jim, yeah, he just doesn't get busted up. Boy, Manuel Marquez, on the other hand, all lumped up, all swollen. I mean, you look at these two guys, and you said he's up one guy's landed in the heart of shots. I don't know why. This fight is about as close as it can be. But Mears and Barrera getting off first. I think that's doing a lot of good for him in the eyes of the judges. They always like the aggressor, and Barrera does get off first constantly, landing a lot of good left hooks. Four to two, Barrera. The card of four to two, Marquez, would in no way be a surprise. Official ringside scores, as we've mentioned before, with a difficult job tonight. Two great tacticians, two great adjusters, two aggressive fighters in the ring. Stop! Manny, this must remind you of some great fights from the 50s and 60s. Oh, yeah, I'm saying just the tension being in the corner with one of these guys, you know, knowing that the fight is up in the air, and, you know, and it's going to probably stay this way all the way to the last round. I don't think no one's going to get a real comfortable decided edge. Oh, right, right, right hand right by hand. Marquez. Yeah, yeah, Momentarily right. stuns Barrera. Barrera trying to show that instinct for fighting yeah. back. That was the most eye-catching yeah. shot of the night. Another big uppercut for Marquez. Snaps Barrera's head back. And a big right hand over the top. Marquez seizing the advantage in the center of the ring. That's the punch that I said earlier that he had to watch out for. Because Marquez has been, been really gambling on that punch all night big long. Big left hook for Marquez. Suddenly, he's beating Barrera to the punch over and over and over. A spectacular rally for Juan Manuel Marquez. Punctuates the seventh round. Uppercut for Marquez. Left hook. Barrera stunned and in trouble. Wobbles back against the rope. Marquez looking to knock his man out. Brilliantly mixes in a couple of body shots. Barrera comes back with the left hand. The right hand from Barrera moves. Marquez often for a moment. But he's still real bottom for that right hand again. Herrera in more trouble than he's it, been in against anybody else against Manny Pacquiao seriously. in the course of the past several years. You wonder if he makes it out of the round. Herrera wobbly on his feet, trying to mix aggression with defense in such a way as to make it out. Juan Manuel Marquez scraped him with a series of power shots. And Barrera comes back with a right hand. And knocks Marquez down. Amazing. In a round that was almost 10-8, Marquez, Barrera scores the knockdown. Wait, but Jay Nady, Jay Nady may have called it a not a knockdown. That would be wrong. Point. And now he's penalizing Barrera for hitting him while he's down. But was it a knockdown? He signaled that it wasn't a knockdown. No, no, That's incredible. I don't think it was a knockdown. You don't think it was a knockdown? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it was a knockdown, but he, he penalized, I think, Marquez, for, I mean, Barrera for trying to hit him, trying to hit him. But did he even hit him? That's we'll what, have to that's look what at the I would replays. like to see. I, I a, really was missed. it a knockdown? And Here's the right hand that hurts Barrera so badly. And he's been... Here's the end of the round. Right, right on the right, chin. Right hand. It was a right. How could that not be a knockdown? That's a knockdown. That is a perfect knockdown. He hit him with a perfect right hand shot, and his knee went to the canvas. That was a knockdown. And if it's not ruled a knockdown, that's a terrible error. And he took away a point when, in fact, it should have been a knockdown. A horrible error. Penalizes Barrera and, and Jay, and Jay Nady was in perfect position to see it. How could he have missed that shot? So in all likelihood, it becomes a 10-8 round for Marquez. And it could have been at least a 9-9 or maybe even a 10-9 for Barrera. It was a landslide in CompuBox where Marquez landed 33 out of 48 to only 11 of 29 for Barrera. And if it's a close decision for Marquez, 
that ruling is going to figure in. Both of these guys are fighting so much determination. And, you know, Marquez still is in a good position, I think, to land that right hand still. Goes. There's a and cut he, over yeah. uh, Juan Manuel Marquez's left eye. And I thought I saw some blood on Barrera at the end of the round, too, which wouldn't have been surprising. Big uppercut lands for Marquez. Suddenly, Barrera has no way to solve Marquez's power punching. Well, he nominated. Well, he saw that in the last round with a right hand that knocked him down. Yeah, and he, he didn't get credit for didn't it. Didn't get credit for an obvious knockdown. You don't want to see a fight like this determined by a referee's mistake. Let's see how it plays out. Barrera's getting to be round, really tough. Right, just like he did with Hamid. Now he's going to be real rough and low down now. In the state of New Jersey, they are now using instant replay so that a decision like that can be reviewed and sorted out. If they had instant replay here tonight, Jay Nady might have been ruling a knockdown for Barrera. Excellent right point, on. Jim. Great right hand. What a great fight. Suddenly, we've got a war in there. Well, There's no more technical boxing match tonight. Emmanuel, you called it earlier. You said that eventually it would have to come to this when the fighters realized it was so close they couldn't count on winning by points. But right now, even though it's close, it's still the world better watch out for Marquez's right hand. He's, he's getting so close now that he can't roll the right hand for Marquez the way that he was when he was fresher. And that's still a big danger of him getting caught with the right hand. And as you can see, Marquez is mixing up the right hands over top with right uppercuts. Stop! The drama of the seventh round spills over into the eighth. And now you can almost feel the crowd getting momentary break as Marco Antonio Barrera continues to try to even the score and get back what he lost in the seventh round. If I'm Larry Hazard of the New Jersey State Athletic Commission, I'm sitting at home tonight thinking, I'm glad my state has instant replay, so a mistake like what you're about to look at does not stand. Let's take another look at the knockdown, which Jay, Rady, Jay Nady ruled not a knockdown. Boom! Perfect right hand shot. Down goes Marquez. That's a knockdown. That's definitely a knockdown, and it can maybe be a big factor in the, if this fight goes to a decision, too. Particularly when it wound up being a penalty point against Marco Antonio Barrera. What the justification is for that, I have no idea. Well, he did hit him when he was down, Jim. Uh, oh, yes, Jay Nady right. was right. He hit him with a shot on top of the head. Yep, that's right. And okay, he so was that, correct. that point can be made. All right. But it would have been a point to his advantage, two-point round with the knockdown. So correct. that's still a big factor. Although that, it was that's a round a, in which Marquez was on the bird yeah, for eight round anyway. That's a two or three point swing in the scoring. <laughs> and this looks, this fight doesn't look like it's going to be more than two or three points between them if it goes the distance. Copy box numbers through round eight. Barrera 180 out of 464, 39%. Marquez 185 out of 487, 38%. Barrera with an edge in jab connects. Marquez with an edge now in power shots, built up largely over the course of the past few rounds. Marquez's right eye appears to be closing. Right or left? The right. The left is puffed. The right is closing. And, and Barrera's starting to land right hands of his own now. He's trying to get in closer to punch now. You know, he's trying to get in with short punches right now. Instead of fighting at a distance, he's trying to get barrel in to get in closer and land with short punches now. They're fighting closely Just, enough yeah. now that their heads are flirting with each other from time to time. But you're right. Big left hook for Marquez, and Barrera comes back with a solid right hand shot. Barrera seems to be aware now that he's in a power punching war, and he's standing up a little bit better to Marquez's shots and landing his own. Like that. Keep on, keep on. 
You spoke before the fight, Emmanuel, about the perception that Barrera is the older fighter because of all the wars he's been in, even though Marquez is chronologically a few months older. But he's not showing that tonight. What an upset it, it would it, be it, if Barrera could come back from what he suffered in the seventh round and stay to late rally. Well, he's doing it right now. He's, he's on his way to a victory the way it looks. If he continues to keep working the way he is and in, in, in particular seem like he's dictating the pace now. And Marquez is trying to figure out what Barrera is going to do where it was a little bit the other way around in the beginning. Barrera throwing Marquez into the ropes and hammering with the right hand. Meanwhile, Marquez has landed more power shots in the fight than ever before in his career. In other words, Juan Manuel Marquez may be fighting the fight of his life and may lose anyway. He may lose still. Well, that three-point swing is a huge swing. There's no reason not to use instant replay in this sport now. Every other sport enhances itself no, no, no. with electronic coverage. Body shots by Marquez and a big right hand upstairs. Barrera comes back with a flurry of his own and ducks the big left hook. It's doubtful that Marquez has ever looked this way. Uppercut at the by end of a, At the end of a fight, much less at this stage. And that shows how Barrera's defense is so good, the fact that he's looked like he's going to get hit, but he hasn't been hit that solid. Coming up next, live boxing from Copenhagen, Denmark. Mikkel Kessler defends his 168-pound title against Librado Andrade. <laughs> Look at that CompuBox graphic. Just check that out. That looks like a tennis match statistic. Equal number of punches thrown, one punch difference in the number of punches landed. Incredible through nine rounds. Right here, you see Barrera coming back with right hands of his own now. He's becoming much more aggressive and trying to get very close because, for whatever reason, a lot of Marquez's punches have a lot of loop in them now as he's getting tired going down the stretch. It's doubtful that Marquez has ever been in a battle like this. We know Barrera has okay. been. Our shots in round nine. Barrera 15 out of 32. Marquez 13 out of 35. Again, through nine rounds, they've thrown an equal number of punches, and they differ by one in the number of punches landed. Marquez lands a big right hand. They rally in the center of the ring. Harold, very quickly, your card through nine. Okay, Jim, 86, 84, six rounds to three. Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I got to tell you, I still think the judges are going to be impressed by the fact that Barrera gets off first. When he does that, if they see it, he lands the cleaner shots, and that's what he's winning it on. The couple more quick cleaner shots. Six to three, Barrera. And now there's blood around the left eye of Marco Antonio Barrera. No doubt the result of a right hand by Marquez. So both fighters are bloodied around the eyes. There's one thing is not too many butts uh, being uh, in this entire fight. Most whatever happens is usually from punches. There's not too many head clashes at all. Series of body shots by Marquez, followed by an attempt upstairs. Marquez has been the aggressor again in the first minute of round number 10. And gets in a big right hand to the mouth of Barrera. Raping Barrera with body shots and uppercuts. Suddenly it looks like round seven again, as Barrera is the slower of the two, and Marquez is landing his power shots. He's that uppercut yeah. is really bedeviling Marco. Well, he's anticipating Barrera to move his head down when he gets inside, and now he's shooting the uppercuts. That's on anticipation of where Barrera's head's going to be at. Barrera starts to go to the right-hand lead, a tactic not previously used, using the straight right to try to set up his left hook. Big round for Marquez. Herrera 
a little slow with his hands and missing in this round. Each round seems to be switching back and forth as the fight goes on. Now Barrera gets in a left hook. Ducks a right hand. Marquez mostly reaching there, but he's landed earlier in the round. Solid right hand by Barrera. Momentarily knocks Marquez off balance. Barrera gets in a little left hand uppercut. Marquez tries his uppercut again, leaping with the left hook. Barrera fires his own left hook and lands it twice. Ten seconds to go in the round. See if Barrera throws in a late rally. They trade shots at the center of the ring. Wow. We are back at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, <laughs> where these kind of fights once were routine. April 15, it's the premiere of Deloy and Mayweather 24-7. It's a four-episode series featuring exclusive behind-the-scenes access to both fighters as they prepare in training camp for the big fight. May 5, it's the live pay-per-view fight, Deloy versus Mayweather. Don't miss out. Come on, but don't go, don't go against the ropes. That's where he catches you. Don't let him take you to the ropes. All right, that's it. One, two, one, two. Here you see Marquez landing the right hand, but you notice he threw a left hook before he threw the right hand this time, and that kind of distorted Barrera's body, because normally if you throw a one, two, you can't hit Barrera with it. A largely swollen Juan Manuel Marquez steps in against an increasingly swollen Marco Antonio Barrera. The fight tightens up on Harold Letterman's card after Marquez clearly won the 10th. Once again, Harold's card reflects in the seventh round the way Jay Nady ruled it. No knockdown for Barrera, deduction of a point from Barrera, therefore a 10 8 round for Marquez. It had been a huge Marquez round up to the moment of the knockdown against him. Not ruled a knockdown, but which replays showed clearly was. Tactical action only in the first minute of round 11. Now Barrera tries to step up the pace. You know, yesterday you predicted that this fight had all the possibilities of ended up being a draw. And seemingly you were very right with that, except maybe based on that scoring Big left hook by Marquez. Back comes Barrera. My feeling was you've got two fighters who can adjust from round to round. Why wouldn't it be a seesaw battle? Why wouldn't it be largely even? When was there ever a better chance for a draw? Seems to me 11 rounds ago I called for a rematch. <laughs> <laughs> Contact there for Marquez. Barrera landed to the body. Marquez landed upstairs. Now Marquez tries to go to the body, and Barrera, for one of the few times all night, ties him up. Dane 80 warns Barrera about holding behind the head. Good, solid left hook to the body by Barrera. Stops Marquez in his tracks. Whatever the outcome of this fight, from Marquez's point of view, he is showing everybody why insiders in boxing, experts, have always considered him in the class of the top featherweights and 130-pounders of his time. He's showing that he certainly belonged in the discussion, right there with Barrera and Morales and Pacquiao. No question about it. As I said earlier, if I was having Barrera, this is the last guy in the world that I don't want to fight. And it's why I wouldn't let him Nassim Hamed box him. When I, when well, I, I started to say, him. when you were training yeah. Prince Nassim yeah. Hamed, he openly ducked Marquez for right. two years. He's always, to me, been maybe the best featherweight in the world, just not normal. Even when we had the big fame with Morales and him, I thought he should have been right up there with Barrera and Morales. Both fighters trying to make statements for the judges in the last 30 seconds of round 11. Which one would you choose? 
Hey, Rafi, hit him with the head. Look, it's a headbutt. Come on. Where's the Vaseline? Where's the Vaseline for the cuts? Oh, man. This is the last round. The last one. Oh, come on, he hit him. Boy, boy, boy. Come on. Don't hold your punches. Let them go. Come on, We're going to win this round. It's close. We're going to win this round. And close your defense. Close your defense. We, we just saw the sign put up that a cut was caused by a punch. So was the knockdown. Crowd <laughs> rises for four blue fighters as the 12th round begins in Las Vegas. Big left hook by Marquez to start off the round. Hey, both fighters at their corner realize that the fight in their man could possibly be determined by the winner of this round here. So there's probably going to be a lot of action in this last round. And the, the cut outside Juan Manuel Marquez's right eye is big enough now to be bothersome. And to show the blood that might help scorers to lean in one direction, if Barrera can make it stick. Barrera popping little punches inside the storm. Marquez trying to land something big. Now the blood begins to flow outside Marquez's right eye. Barrera got in a little left hand. Enough to open it back up and make it bleed. Marquez trying to get a right hand across the top. The drama intensifies with two minutes to go. Now you may see Barrera's experience pay through this last round because he knows how to box it. When he gets his floater going, he can put together combinations so beautiful and be moving all at the same time while he's punching. Barrera jab, jab, jab. Throws a little right hand. Jabs and beats Marquez to the punch. Marquez lands the left hook. Barrera backs him off with the right hand. Big left hook for Marquez. Barrera lands a right. Trading punches down the stretch. Another big left hook for Marquez. Barrera momentarily ties him up. Don't hold his head down. Stop! In the second half of the fight, Marco Antonio Barrera seems to show a little bit of the wear and tear from his long and difficult career. Marquez shows his tremendous desire to finally win a big fight. Barrera comes back and strafes him with a left hook. Takes a left hook on the chin. Hits him back with one of his own. This is one of those fights, I hate to say it, I wish I could hit three more rounds in the 15. Back in the day. Back in the day. Tony DeMarco and Carmen Basilio. This is a great fight here. Country was just so active. It has lived up to its expectations. And perhaps exceeded them. Yeah. Power shots for Marquez. Herrera lands a left hook and steps away. Hard right hand for Herrera. Marquez fighting through the flowing blood. Ten seconds to go. Who will rally last? Barrera lands two shots. Marquez tries again. Barrera with a right hand. Big left hook for Marquez. And the bell ends the drama. What a fight. What a confrontation. What let's, a glorious tribute to Mexican fighting. Let's do it again. <laughs> what a challenge to the scorers. I had Marquez winning by a point. Which means that the knockdown had been ruled correctly, you had a draw. And you see the tributes on both sides as the members of Marquez's camp are hugging Barrera. And the members of Barrera's camp are trading pleasantries with Marquez. Here's the drama in round seven. First, Marquez hurts Barrera and hurts him badly with power shots in the middle of the ring. It looks for a while as though Barrera might not make it out of the round. He wobbles back against the ropes. 
put into position to perhaps suffer a knockdown. And then, with a perfect right-hand shot, he knocks Marquez to the canvas, then steps forward and takes a shot at Marquez's head. Jay Nady, the referee, rules, first of all, no knockdown, clearly incorrect. And then, correctly, takes away a point from Barrera for taking a shot at Marquez's head. So there's a one-point discrepancy between what Nady actually ruled and what reality ought to be. And let's go to Michael Buffer to find out if that one point decided something. Here are the scores. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, before we go to the scorecards, a round of applause for these two warriors in the ring here tonight. The judges' scorecards are as follows. Doug Tucker, 118-109. Patricia Morse Jarman, 116-111. Paul Smith, 116-111. To the winner, by unanimous decision, and new WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Juan Manuel Dinamita Marquez. All three judges preferring the power punching of Marquez. And the knockdown becomes a tempest in a teapot as it affected nothing whatsoever. All of our complaining about the knockdown ruling stands for nothing because in the end, the judges saw a relatively one-sided victory for Marquez over Barrera. And Larry stands by with the man the judges deemed the clear and unequivocal winner of the fight, Juan Manuel Marquez. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Juan Manuel. What does this fight mean to you? You know, this fight is very important for me. I say in the first press conference, this fight is a war. I, I say I ready to the war. I, I win the fight, and uh, congratulations to Barrera. He's a great fighter. You are very marked up. You fought a, a brawl, a tough brawl. Have you ever been in a fight like this before? Yes, hey. this fight, every round, Every round it's a war. Uh, uh, every round I win the fight. Every round I win, I win round. In the seventh round, you went down. The referee ruled that it was not a knockdown. But you must know what we know from watching the replay, that he hit you on the chin and that it was a knockdown. Let's take a look at the monitor if we can get it up here. All right, you saw. Yes. You, it was, you thought it was a knockdown? Uh, okay. Me sentí yo, sí me conectó. Yo estaba bien. No, me conectó, fue un golpe de rozón en la mandíbula, me conectó, pero yo me, me sentí bien nada más que me pegó abajo en el piso. Yes, he did, he did connect me. He punched me, it was a glancing punch, but he did hit me when I was down also. Do you think there should be a rematch? Yes, 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 I think. Marco Barrera is very, very, very aggressive fight, and uh, yes. Yes, I, 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 I want to I wanna rematch. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Thank Juan you. Manuel. Thank you. Marco Antonio, congratulations on an outstanding fight. You were not able to be as aggressive as you hoped you could be. Why? Well, it's because I, I move all the time. I. I feel that I'm very fast, I do my better job. But I think so, I do it necessary for winning this fight. I don't know what happened with the judges. So you felt that you were able to box him in the early rounds, and so that it wasn't necessary for you to become aggressive. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. We, we, we fight the two, I box him, I, I throw punches, but I hit him and he, he no come out, he down. Yes. Never, never change the referee. All right. Maybe we will show that knockdown again, and you tell us what you think if we can show it. Yeah. Look. Look the hand. Look. Look the hand. Look. Hit down, and the referee they say nothing. 
Look, did, look that. Did you know? It's because the referee, the referee never touched me, and he both. <coughs> All right, but I, you, I never. You, you hit him when he was down, however. No, no. They, they, I, yes, I hit, but never, never talked. All right, did the, did you realize that the referee had called it not a knockdown? Exactly, and, and did you know that? Yeah, I da uh, wow. Robert Marquez down. I never changed, never con a count. Did that influence you in the fight? Did you think I got a knockdown, but I wasn't credited with it, and did it yes, discourage I think so. you? I think so. The referee, and I don't know what happened. It's the second time that did my fight. Uh, when Manuel Marquez hit me here, I never caught a pound, and hit hit down, and never. I don't know what happened with the referee. All right, you said before the fight, this is your last year as a fighter. You also said or hinted that if this that this could be your last fight. After this, is this your last fight or do you want a rematch? I don't know, I don't know. I, now I got to take my vacation with my kids, with my wife, with my family. I got to think, I got to think about because now I think so bad judges, a bad referee. I don't know, I got to think because I don't need necessary, I win. I win. I don't know what happened in the me in the mental the judges. So doesn't that make you feel that you should fight him again? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I go to to take my vacation. I go to think. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe in this time I say bye bye, uh, Golden Boy. I don't know. I don't. I go to think about. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. All right. Now I'm with uh, Keith Kaiser, the chairman of the the, the director of the commission. Keith, was, as you know, in New Jersey, they have instant replay for this sort of situation. It was a clear punch, a clear knockdown. The referee missed it. Will you consider putting in instant replay for such things? Well, instant replay is something that we've, we've thought about for years. We're going to look closely at what happens in New Jersey in the, uh, with their uh, trial period on it. And anything's possible. With, with technology uh, improving by leaps and bounds every day in this world, that's always a possibility. If this had been a very close fight uh, by the judges' scorecard, that knockdown or non-knockdown would have made the difference. Doesn't that say something to you about not just we'll see, but we should take a hard look at implementing it? Right. No, no, and we have done that, and it's a situation where you got to look at whether that takes away from the uh, traditional aspects of the sport. Um, you know, football was slow to get instant replay. It's worked for them, though there are certain things that they don't allow instant replay on. Boxing might be a situation there. Um, it, it's always a possibility. We'll definitely look at it. Thank you very much, Thank Keith. You,